In today's video, I'm going to talk about observability. If you don't know what that is and how that can be beneficial to you as a software engineer, don't worry, keep watching the video and I'll explain everything. Well, the literal meaning of observability is the ability to observe, as it comes from the words observe and ability, the root of the term actually originates from something called control theory, which is a branch of engineering and mathematics that deals with the behavior of dynamic systems with inputs. In control theory, a system is considered observable if the current state of the system can be determined in a finite time using only the output. Or to put more simply, observability is the ability to infer the internal state of the system based on its external outputs. When it comes to the software world, the definition of observability is quite similar, but it could signify different things as observability is really an umbrella term containing different tools, practices, and concepts inside of it. As a simple guideline to help you understand what could be considered an observability tool or not, if a tool enhances the understanding that you have of your system's internal state, then you can definitely categorize it as an observability tool. But maybe you're asking yourself this question, why should I care about observability? Well, as software becomes more complex and more distributed, the importance of observability has never been more critical. This is not just theoretical. We see the benefits of observability across the industry. For example, the State of Observability 2023 survey discovered that observability leaders report one-third the number of outages per year as beginners, launching 34% more products and revenue streams, and being four times as likely to resolve instances of unplanned downtime or ser serious service issues in just minutes versus hours or days. We also see this trend from the overall growth of the field. Once observability is adop adopted, it becomes something that companies don't give up easily. And even if they don't have proper observability in place, companies usually have some basic form of observability. Take log files, for example. Without the dedicated solutions, these log files can be a nightmare to sift through, opposed to having a centralized log solution, which has query and visualization capabilities, aggregation capabilities, etc. With that being said, a lot of developers wouldn't consider it sensible to write code without any tests. But for some reason, they would seem content with being oblivious to runtime errors that happen that could crash the entire program. And they might also be fine with lacking any alerts for critical issues and only receiving notifications when the issue escalated and it's already too late. So observability is not only about providing the ability to easily and quickly access the state of your program and investigate what happened, it's also about being proactive. By monitoring and setting alerts, we can discover potential issues a lot faster and actually address them before they become a significant problem. This raises the question, what exactly do you need to know about your program? Everybody have different needs, obviously. It's still beneficial though to know the available solutions so you can better understand how you're going to select your observability stack. All observability tools share a common theme. They all resolve around two things, sending out data and then analyzing that data. Typically this data is data that's derived from production environments where it's a lot harder to understand what's going on compared to developing in a local setting. That means that the nature of the data and the methods of analysis can really change from one tool to another. Each one is going to address a specific goal. One concept that really stands out in the world of observability is the three pillars of observability, which are logs, metrics, and traces. And don't worry if you don't know what they are. You can think of these pillars as different types of data that you're going to send from a system. And each one of these ways have a unique method of analysis. This concept primarily came into usage after Twitter's article in 2016 called Four Pillars of Observability. After that, Peter Bergen released an article in 2017 called Metrics, Tracing, and Logging, which maps of observability to three pillars in a Venn diagram. Logs are like a journal for your software, keeping account of events that happen while the software is running. And you can think of any type of events that may be useful to you, like informational messages or any type of errors, etc. 
Logs offer information about what happened in a system. They're often used to find past activity or search for a problem by querying them and trying to investigate and find specific problems. So searching like something like, give me all the error logs where the service is orders and the error is serialization error is something that's pretty common to do when looking for a specific log. Tools such as Kibana allow you to visualize your logs and actually create full dashboards from them. Metrics are numerical representation of data. So you can think of a metric as any type of number. And these metrics are measured over time. They provide numerical data that can be analyzed to detect patterns, trends, and potential issues. Metrics can measure a variety of things. So think of things like memory usage, CPU, disk space, response time, processing rate, etc. And they're often used for operational use cases and also have alerts set up on these metrics. So it's something common to say, alert me if my disk usage is over 80% or alert me if my median response time is over 200 milliseconds. Traces track the journey of a request as it passes through a system, recording the entire chain of events from start to finish. So imagine having performance problems in a service that interacts with up to five services. How do you know if one of them is the bottleneck? With a lot of services, that's something that's pretty hard to do, but with tracing, this information is instantly available to you. And it can also be used to track things like DB queries or methods inside a service and how long they take to actually execute. These three pillars used together provide really powerful tools to analyze the overall state of your system, investigate specific flows, and also understand how your system behaves over time. Now, all of this probably sounds great, but observability doesn't come without its set of challenges. And there are two common categories of challenges you will likely encounter. The first type of challenge is the technical challenge. This contains everything that you need to learn in order to successfully implement observability tools in your company or for your use case. This is probably a new subject for you and there are best practices you may wanna learn and there are things that you may need to learn in the tool if you wanna use it correctly. So this type of challenge is actually good. You do wanna encounter that and it's just a learning curve that you're going to have while learning how to implement this but it will become easier over time and there is a bunch of free information online on how to do this. The second type of challenge is more of a challenge of scale and this is where it becomes really hard to maintain observability infrastructure if you don't have the proper expertise for it. Scaling Elasticsearch clusters and stuff like that is really, really difficult. And actually this is one of the reasons that many choose to subscribe to an observability platform that charges them based on the data they sent and let them deal with scaling. Observability has become an indispensable tool in the software industry for understanding system states and detecting issues. It encapsulates a wide range of tools, practices, and concepts, all aimed with one purpose, at giving you insights into your system. Thank you so much for watching this video and make sure you stay tuned and subscribe because in the next videos, I'm going to talk about actual implementations of observability and show you how you can integrate different open source observability tools using Node.js. See you next time.